With home prices reaching record highs and an affordability crisis at its worst in decades, it's no wonder people are worried about a potential housing crash. So let's break down the current constrained housing market. What's really happening, what the experts are saying, and whether a crash is actually likely. The memories of the 2008 housing crash still loom large. Between 2005 and 2007, the US housing market showed signs of instability. Home values plummeted, foreclosures surged, and the bursting of the real estate bubble plunged the global economy into its deepest downturn since the Great Depression. But today's market is different from the one that led to the Great Recession, and there are several reasons why. Welcome to another edition of Economics Explained. I'm your host, Brennan Thomas, and today we are discussing a constrained market. The first major difference? Inventory levels. Back in late 2007, Orange County, California had nearly 18,000 homes on the market. Today, inventory levels are just over 3,500 homes. That's a massive drop. In fact, the current inventory count is operating under pre-pandemic levels as the United States is in the midst of a housing supply crisis. The supply shortage we're seeing now has been primarily due to high mortgage rates caused by the Federal Reserve's efforts to control inflation. Another reason we're not likely to see a crash is that the lending standards are much stronger now than they were before the Great Recession. Back then, almost anyone could get a loan. Today, new mortgage borrowers need excellent credit. Just look at the median credit score for new borrowers in early 2024, an impressive 770. Foreclosure activity is also extremely low. In the summer of 2008, Orange County had nearly 6,000 distressed listings. Fast forward to summer 2024, and there were only seven. Without a wave of foreclosures or a loosening of lending practices, a crash seems very unlikely. Most housing economists and analysts agree. If there is a market correction, it's going to be very modest. We're not expecting anything like the Great Recession, where some homes lost 50% of their value. Instead, as more homes come to the market and buyers face affordability constraints, supply and demand will slowly balance out, possibly in 2025 or later. During the pandemic, we saw home values and prices skyrocket because of low interest rates, which depleted a lot of the existing inventory and exacerbating the inventory crisis. When rates started to climb in 2022, many expected the market to slow down, and it did, but not for long. In October 2023, home values held steady even as mortgage rates soared to 8%, their highest level in more than 23 years. Then, in July 2024, the National Association of Realtors reported that home prices hit a new all-time high, with the median price at $422,600, a 4.2% increase over the previous year. This marked the 13th consecutive month of year-over-year -year price jumps. We are, however, starting to see some signs of cooling. That 4.2% increase is still a strong gain, but it's a slowdown compared to June's 5.4% increase and May's 5.9% increase. So why are prices still going up despite high mortgage rates? Well, many homeowners who locked in ultra-low rates during the pandemic are holding off on selling. Meanwhile, potential buyers are being priced out due to those same high rates. But experts believe that if inflation continues to cool down, as we've seen in recent months, mortgage rates will continue to fall, more sellers will join the party, and all that pent-up demand will flood the market. The market has seen a slight uptick in homes for sale, but not enough to significantly lower prices. The National Association of Realtors noted a 1.3% increase in existing home sales in July 2024 compared to June, but the pace is still near historic lows. Even with 1.33 million homes on the market in July, inventory remains well below pre-pandemic levels. As a result of these low inventory levels, we've seen a sharp increase in home values over the past five years, which has been a boon for existing homeowners, but it's created significant challenges for those trying to enter the market. Lawrence Yoon, chief economist at the National Association of Realtors, summed it up well. It's very good news for homeowners getting all of those gains, but frustrating news for people who want to enter the homeownership market. So where does that leave us? 
While the market isn't exactly in crash territory, it's also not in great shape for new buyers. The big question now is whether this slowdown in price increases will persist and make housing more accessible for the thousands of buyers waiting on the sidelines, or if lower interest rates will reignite demand, pushing prices even higher into 2025. Although both housing and inflation are cooling, the gap between the two remains wider than usual, with the National Home Price Index averaging 2.8% higher than the Consumer Price Index. As we move into the fall, seasonal factors and an increase in inventory may ease home prices on a month-to-month -month basis, but significant price drops are unlikely. Prices are still expected to remain higher than they were last year. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next installment of Economics Explained.